Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at the My Storeroom software uh, developed by the company My Barcode Software. This software has been designed to manage a set of uh, stock items, tools, books, whatever, in a storeroom or set of storerooms amongst a community of borrowers. Now the first time that you come into this software, this is the screen you will see. And this screen has been devised to get you up and started as quickly as possible. So if we look from the top of the screen uh, to the bottom of the screen, you will see that there are the instructions that you need to get started with the software. The first thing you do is add a storeroom or storerooms. You'll see that we've um, already added two of these. And if I was to click on this box, I would go to the storerooms tab to add more storerooms. The second step is to add borrowers, who I'm going to borrow the items to. The third thing is to add the stock items to the storerooms that I've defined. And after that, I'm ready to start checking items out and checking items in. And uh, there's a, I can view the status of all of my items by simply looking at some of these screens or there's a set of reports that will tell me exactly what's happening. So to get started, what we'll do is we shall click right here, which takes us to the checkout screen. Now, I'd like to point out a few things before I go into the checkout functionality. You will see that dotted around the screen are little help buttons. Now these help buttons are meant to help you out in various areas of the screen. In this area of the screen, items currently checked out. If I click on that blue button, you will see that a description comes up telling me exactly what's happening in that part of the screen. There's also a um, help file up in here if you have uh, any problems with uh, things happening with the software. There is also a set of bold items within any screen. Now in this screen it means that there is something important happening. So um, you'll notice that this software is step based. So step one is scan or find a borrower. Uh, step two is select a storeroom. Step three, step four, etc. Or the bold can mean that there is a mandatory field. Usually there'll be a blue field next to it which says that, you know, you must have this field in, or in order to operate um, this screen. Okay, so let's get started. Um, what we're going to do is tell the software who the borrower is who's going to check out items. Okay, so we can do that in several ways. We can use a barcode scanner and scan right there. And if it's a correct ID, all of the details will come up. Or we can type in the borrower ID and hit OK. Or we can use the quick find function. Now, with the quick find function, I can click. I only have one in this example, but if there were more, I can click and I'll see all the details of the borrower down here. So I've clicked uh, John Smith. I'll click select. And lo and behold, You'll see that my status here is borrower found and that it's John Smith who has this contact detail and these comments. You'll also notice over here that everything that John currently has checked out is showing up over here. Now um, there's a shovel that he's checked out which has no due date and there's a compressor which has a due date of January 1st of this year. If I was to click the show overdue button, you will see that the compressor is very much one of the items overdue. If I unclick it, all the items come back. Similarly, I can click borrower history and the history of everything that John has done will come up on this screen as well. Now, I, I've selected a borrower. Time to go to step two, select a storeroom. Now I'm pretty happy with the warehouse. So I'll go to step three, scan item barcode. Just like with the borrower, I have the ability to barcode scan or type in and hit OK. Or I think we're just going to use the quick find again. Now with this quick find, what haven't we? Uh, what we'll do is take a look at some of these items first. OK, so you'll notice that there's two types of items. One an I, which stands for inventory. And one are C, is C, which stands for consumable. Now, consumable items are just that. The user is expected to uh, take them away, and they're not expected to be returned. They can be, but they're not expected to be returned. So they don't show up in any of the checkout lists. 
um, although they do show up in the reports. The inventory items are higher value items which are expected to be returned and are, are designated by I. So what we'll do is we'll check out a consumable item nails and you'll see it's already automatically been um, added uh, to the list. And uh, let's see here, we'll also look at taking out, um, what don't we have here? Um, how about a user guide? We'll double click there. And you'll notice that there's the option to put in a due date. Now, if I had selected this due date here before and everything that comes onto the list would have that due date. But look, I forgot, but all I really need to do is click near due date there and say, okay, look, I want a, a due date of the, the 30th of April, say. And that's shown up there. So I'm looking pretty good now. I'm thinking maybe I'll need a few more nails, so I just double click quantity there and I put in four, hit the tab key, so now I'm, I've got four nails that I'm checking out. I'm pretty happy with all of that, so I just go to step four and say finish checkout. And five items have been checked out. Okay, well that's pretty much it for the checkout screen, so what we'll do is we'll go to the check in screen and we will again select John Smith and what we'll see is that none of the nails are on the list despite having selected two of them they're consumable items so they're out there um, however what we also do notice is that the user guide is there with the uh, due date of April 30th and what you'll notice down here is when I click here the barcode changes so this is a bit of a shorthand uh, for the store person so uh, Look, this compressor is pretty overdue, so the barcode's already showed up there. So if we click OK, lo and behold, the um, compressor um, is being returned. Uh, let's see, the user guide isn't due yet, so why don't we just click um, the shovel and we'll hit OK there. So there's a couple of items to be returned to this warehouse uh, from this borrower. Now, if I wish, I can uh, create a receipt, and uh, what will happen is when I click Finish Checkout and Check In, that receipt will appear. I won't do that at this point in time. I'll just say Finish Check In. Two items have been checked in, and that's pretty much it. If I go uh, back to this user one more time, double click, you'll see that all I have left now is the user guide. So let's now go to the stock screen. Now in the stock screen, there are two sections to it. The first section gives a description of the stock item. So it has this barcode and that description and this type and that serial number, etc., etc. What we're going to do though is we're going to edit an item. So it is simple as um, either double clicking the item or clicking an item and clicking edit. What, what I wanted to show you here is that um, within edit item, there are a number of user definable fields. So somebody's already set up this field as serial number. All you need to do though is double click any of the field names and you can change it to whatever you want. So why don't we make this one a, um, a, a cost code perhaps. Click save and now that field is cost code and when you're either importing data or uh, setting adding an item you can set the cost code right here and that that field will be there throughout all of the uh, list boxes that you list and it'll also be in all of the reports so within managing the description of any items you can add an item you can in an add item screen you can edit an item, you can delete one or more items, though you've got to be a little bit careful here. The software will warn you if there are items currently checked out. Um, you can duplicate an item, so if there are items very similar to, in this case, compressor, uh, you know, there might be another type of compressor, so you give it a new barcode and, and a little more detail, and you can put that, that information in as well. Now in the bottom of the screen, you manage the stock quantities and the locations. So you'll see that we have a certain number of nails. John Smith has checked out, it turns out, five boxes of nails. Um, and he still has that uh, user guide out. Now within this field, uh, you can do three things. You can receive stock. So um, I've got already um, 35, um, say, boxes of these nails. I, I've just received another... 10, save that, and now it's up to 45. 
Um, I can uh, adjust my in inventory of stock. Um, it turns out I don't actually have 19. Um, I only have 15. So I adjust that stock down to there. And I can also move stock. So if I want to move stock between either warehouses or from a user to a warehouse or whatever, um, I have the ability to move items as well. And I can do that in two ways. I can move stock from one location to another location, or I can move items in multiple locations to a specific location. So let's take a look at borrowers. Now we have John Smith, and if I click here, all of John's details come up here. Um, similar to the um, item, uh, you also have the ability to put in up to nine user-definable fields. So if I want to change, say, field two, um, I can change that to, say, the, uh, the building um, that um, John works in. I store that, and you'll see that that's come up here as well. I also have the ability to make comments about this borrower, um, con main contact details, um, etc. I, it's very similar to the item thing. I have the ability to add a borrower. I have the ability to edit a borrower, delete a borrower, or duplicate a borrower details to create a new borrower. Storeroom, not much different. Um, far fewer um, choices here. You have a barcode, a description, and, and any comments uh, you might have uh, about that storeroom. The import data uh, capability of this is very strong. So what we'll do is we'll run out and uh, we'll grab a file here. And you'll see that this import file is in what's called CSV format. Now, this is one of the formats that you can take an Excel spreadsheet and convert it into. It's a text file separated by commas. And the software basically will give you a view of that data. Now, you can import into several different areas. You can import a list of borrowers from a Excel spreadsheet slash CSV file. You can import a number of items. You can import stock and you import storerooms. This is clearly stock because it has the barcode description quantity location. The software is smart enough to figure out that um, barcode is there, description is there, location is in that column and quantity is in that location. You notice the bold fields in this case stand for you absolutely must have at least these three fields to import into stock. Okay, so we're looking pretty happy with that. So we just say simply import and you'll see that it imports into the software and you can see the progress bar run across. Oh, you can also export data. So you have two choices of how you export data. You can export it into CSV format or you can export it into Excel format. Uh, first of all, you select a um, export format, then you select the type of export you want. Well, we're thinking of exporting stock. And what you'll see is it's filled in all of the available fields that you can actually export. And it's actually giving you a brief view of the data and what it will look like when it gets exported. So at that point, this point in time, all I need to do is click export and it'll either ask me for a a CSV file name or it'll put it straight into Excel. Um, the next thing is a set of reports. The, the report function is very strong within this software. I can uh, report on borrower details. I can report on the various check-ins, check-out, and the history, uh, what's due today, uh, show me all due dates, um, you know, what's currently checked out. Um, history by borrower or by date. Um, you have the ability to make various borrowers items and storerooms inactive. It'll keep track of all of that. Um, there's also uh, consumable menus. Um, there's also move details over due items, stock details, and uh, that sort of thing. Um, what we'll do is we will select uh, stock de details uh, by storeroom there, and we will click run and no points uh, for guessing that this is this warehouse and these are the items currently uh, within that warehouse. The final screen is administration. Uh, one of the great powers of the administration screen is that you have the ability to make the software a bit more flexible so you can actually allow items to be checked out when the quantity is actually zero or allow check-in of items that weren't checked out by the borrower or to automatically add unknown barcodes that are 
um, uh, SCAD. Now, this this comes with a, a bit of a warning. However, it, it, it assists in that, you know, if there, there are barcodes, for example, that weren't included within stock and somebody's trying to check them out, they aren't stopped uh, from checking them out. It, it, the software actually logs that that has happened. And finally, there is a uh, unintended mode. This unintended mode is, is a mode you use uh, when you don't have um, a store person available. And essentially what happens is this is all that sits on the screen. So a borrower can come up and run this software in two different ways. The first way they can do is just run it like I am right now. They can select their borrower name. Um, they can select um, the uh, storeroom uh, that they're going to be taking stuff out of. And then they can select whether they're checking items in, checking items out. They can set uh, whatever quantity they want. And then they simply start scanning barcodes at this point in time. And that will it'll obviously keep a log of all of this within the software. Similarly, there is a, a barcode sheet that can be uh, printed out. And what that barcode sheet allows you to do is scan a barcode that says set borrower. And then the borrower sets their borrower ID. Set storeroom. They, set the, they scan the storeroom ID. Um, they can set scan whether they're checking items in or checking items out. They can um, set a quantity using these barcodes. So there's two ways in which to run this. One is by the screen itself and the other one is uh, using this enhanced um, unattended barcode sheet. So this pretty much uh, ends the presentation uh, for the My Storeroom um, software. We uh, urge you to go to the website and if you have any more questions, uh, please feel free to contact either My Barcode Software or your uh, reseller. Thank you for your time.